This video is supported by NordVPN. Starship prototype SN24 rolled out to the pad recently to begin its long journey of cryogenic testing and static fires in the hopes of becoming the first Starship to actually reach orbit. But this Starship prototype has a unique design that other prototypes didn't have. It's the first one to feature any kind of door in its cargo bay section, but it's not the kind of door that we all imagined and saw in the SpaceX renders. This tiny little opening is specifically for deploying SpaceX's next generation Starlink satellites, Starlink 2, which are much larger than the previous ones and they aren't able to be launched on the Falcon 9. But the fact that SpaceX has already started working on this door is a sign that they really want or really need to get these Starlink sats into space as soon as possible. Usually when SpaceX first launches a rocket into orbit, they like to launch something strange or funny to use as a test payload. Satellite companies aren't going to put their super expensive satellites on a brand new rocket that hasn't been tested. So rocket companies usually use something heavy like a block of metal to act as a test payload. With SpaceX though, they launched a block of cheese on the first Dragon flight and Elon Musk's very own Tesla Roadster on the first Falcon Heavy flight. But with Starship, it seems like they're not going to waste time with any of that and they're just going to get straight down to business. This makes sense though because unlike when they launched the Falcon 9 or the Falcon Heavy for the first time, they now have their own satellites to launch into space. And since it's their own satellites, it's not nearly as bad if something goes wrong. But according to Musk, the large cargo bay door that we all expected is something for the future when Starship is more developed. The solution for now is to create this Pez dispenser type system which shoots Starlink sats out of a tiny opening in the side of the vehicle. But according to what Musk said during his Everyday Astronaut interview, the system was actually inspired by industrial pallet stackers and will use electric mechanisms to stack the satellites and push them out from the bottom. The problem that they might have with this system is that when Starship is in orbit, all of the satellites are in zero G, so the gravity that pulls them down on Earth won't have the same effect. Instead, there will be some kind of mechanism to drive the satellite stack down to the bottom, where another mechanism will push them out through the opening. Thanks to SpaceX Eccentric, we can see almost exactly how this dispenser will work. The only difference is that Starlink sats will actually be loaded in two stacks and deployed two at a time, as we can see from this recent SpaceX render. With this design, it should allow around 54 Starlink sats to fit inside of Starship. This is similar to the amount that they currently launch on the Falcon 9, but Starlink 2 satellites are much larger, measuring 7 meters in length compared to the old ones which were around 3 meters long. But this is slightly confusing, because in the past, it looked like Starship was designed to launch 120 satellites all at once. So either Starlink sats have gotten way bigger since then, or Starship's payload bay is about to grow drastically in future prototypes. One of the great things about this design is that it can basically be run in reverse to load the satellites into Starship. Because obviously when Starship is fully assembled, there's no easy way to access its cargo bay without cutting a big hole in it, which is basically what they've done here. Speaking of loading the satellites into Starship, this mysterious looking cube structure was spotted at the Boca Chica site recently and no one could figure out what it was at first. Now we know that this is some kind of clean room that can be used to stack Starlink sats into Starship. The opening on one side perfectly matches Starship's opening and there is a door sized hole on the other side for workers to enter. It's unclear how SpaceX will place this box up to the height of SN24's opening. But as always, SpaceX is trying to revolutionise how we do things in space, and it's likely that something could go wrong with this deployer. There really isn't anything quite like this that has been done before in space. The closest thing I could find was Ambasat, which seems to be some kind of startup hoping to launch a bunch of mini computer chip satellites using a stacking system. However, this one simply deploys each satellite by spinning the satellite housing and letting each one naturally drift out. Or perhaps it's more similar to the CubeSat deployer on the ISS, which shoots out many satellites from its deployer where the satellites are stacked. This has been a very useful thing to have on the ISS, much better than literally throwing the satellites by hand, which astronauts have had to do before. But when will we actually see Starship's deployer in action? 
Well, with everything Musk related, you have to account for a certain delay in time. SpaceX is hoping to launch SN24 on top of booster number 7, which is being completed and having its engines installed right now. SpaceX has finally received approval from the FAA to start launching Starship and Super Heavy, but first they need to get their launch license. And by the time all of that has been complete and SpaceX have thoroughly tested Starship and Super Heavy, I would guess that a launch is likely from September onwards, but really it's impossible to tell. Either way, I'm sure that when the launch finally happens, SpaceX will have all the cameras in place to show off every part of the mission. Remember the first Falcon Heavy mission where SpaceX built a custom rig around the Tesla specifically to have cool camera angles? Well, expect the same for this launch. So we definitely have something to look forward to, whether it happens this summer or later this year. A big thanks to NordVPN for supporting this video. Being from the UK but living in Germany, I miss watching some of the TV shows and content that I would get back home. But when I go to watch them, they are always blocked. Thanks to NordVPN, I can just connect to a server around the world with one click and then boom, I now have access to everything I would have watched before. With thousands of servers in over 60 countries, you'll also be able to unlock all the content around the world that you've been missing out on. But it's not just about virtually hopping around the world. NordVPN also helps to protect you from those annoying ads that pop up and it steers you away from any harmful websites or files. You can use it on up to 6 of your devices at a time and if you visit nordvpn.com slash primalspace, you can get an exclusive deal. And if it's not for you, then no worries, because there is a 30 day money back guarantee. Well that's it for today, if you enjoyed the video then make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more SpaceX news. This really helps to support and grow the channel massively. But if you want to go a step further, consider becoming a patron where you can watch each video before it goes live on YouTube without any ads. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.